Hi, in this video I'll be going over how to use the UCK editor. It's um, what we use with our content management system that allows you to add paragraphs to your website, you know, uh, text, uh, pictures, tables, um, links, you know, anything like that. For, so in here, it's in, I'm on the admin side currently, um, it'll be all these buttons in the, in the gray box, so that's all my text that's uh, currently on the home page of my, my website. So uh, the first button we have here is the source button. If you're familiar with HTML code, that's where you can click it and actually go in there for, you know, it gives you that extra control if you are familiar with HTML code. You can go in the source of the content. Um, but by no means do you have to use the source button if you're not familiar with HTML or you just, you know, you don't want to be bothered with going into the code itself. So if you accidentally go into it, you can just click the source button again and go back to the, the normal content. So the next button we have here is uh, templates. So that's if you're starting, you know, you're starting a new page and you don't want to start completely from scratch. So we can go through here and, you know, I can select, okay, that's something I'm looking for. I click it and then there's, you know, a, a template to work with to start, you know, creating the content of this page. Uh, so the next couple buttons, uh, cut, copy, and paste. Um, if you're familiar with the keyboard shortcuts, uh, you know, such as control C for copy, control V for paste, control X for cut, all those work and a lot of others uh, like, you know, control A and control F. Um, but, you, you know, you also have the buttons if you're not familiar with them or you want to use the buttons instead. The next one right here is paste as plain text. So if I click that, it'll actually open up a box. Now, um, paste as plain text, you know, like the name suggests, it pastes it as plain text into the content in the background here. And what that does is actually get rid of the formatting in, of the text that you're pasting in there. And by formatting, I'm talking about, you know, it, it can be a lot of many things, or it can be many different things, but uh, it could be things like times, the font, you know, what kind of the font, Times New Roman, what size, 30, uh, what color is the font, you know, blue, what's, is the background highlighted with yellow, you know, stuff like that. So if you just want to get rid of all that and then you can edit the text, you know, yourself, then that's where you can paste, you know, use the paste plain text uh, button. Uh, the next one is spell checkers. So that's where you can actually enable the spell checker um, of your website right there. And it, of course, you know, like Microsoft uh, Word or uh, Outlook, or, sorry, not Outlook, uh, open office and you know unline the word with red and then you can right click on it and uh, you know, correct the word with the correct spelling. Um, right here undo and redo so that's where I can select my paragraph and undo and redo. Right, I, you know, If I accidentally erase something I just click undo right there. Uh, find and replace so you could use control F but also here is you know if you're looking for a text or a phrase in your, your the, the content of the page you're currently editing, you type it in here and click find and it'll highlight it for you. And the next button, replace. Um, you know, you can tell it what uh, word or phrase you're looking to replace and, you know, what do you want to replace it with, right? Um, next button, select all, so that's where it just selects everything that's in the content editor itself. So everything's highlighted, then, you know, from there I can delete everything or remove the formatting, you know, like, anything like that. So yeah, that's remove formatting. This is almost the same thing as paste as plain text, but if the text is already in your the content area of your website, you can you know copy it and remove the formatting via that button right there. So the next couple, you know, I'm sure you've used these, but you know, align align to the left, center to the right, justify. So all those work. Um, next couple are bold, italicize, underline. Again, some basic ones. Strike through, and you know how I use those for an example is you know highlight what I want to bold, and then I click it bolds it, same thing with italicize, underline, strike through. Um, the next two buttons here are subscript and superscript. Um, they sound complicated, but they're, they just, uh, they do a very basic function. So currently here I have a date, um, and I'll select the TH or highlight it, and in this case I'll use superscript. So it, it moves the TH, makes it smaller, and moves it up more, but it's still on the same line here. So you can see I'm going back and forth over them. Um, and subscript would just be the exact opposite, where it moves it down to the bottom. Here we have uh, numbering and bullets, so I just click where I want the, the number or the bullet and you know it'll create it appropriately. Here we have uh, indec or indenting, so I can increase the indent or decrease it. Um, here depending on the style of your website, sometimes created by the developer, uh, this is block quotes, yours could look different, but essentially you know, you're putting something in quotes and yours again could look different than this one. Um, you can, of course, too, just add quotes if you want to, to you know, the beginning and end of the of the quote. Here we have the link button, so, you know, probably using this functionality a lot. Create an example here. Click here, link. 
So I'll highlight it, click the link button, or actually to show you, I'll preview the page. So currently I haven't actually created it as a link, it's just plain text, I can't, I, I can't click anything, right? So how I'd create that into a link, you know, blue underlined text is the most, you know, used one, I guess you could say, is that, you know, highlighted the text and I click the link button right there. And then in here I can supply the URL of where I want to link to. So a link is certain, you know, essentially it goes somewhere else. It could be on your website, it could be on someone else's website, um, pretty much anywhere on the internet kind of thing. So in this case, you know, I'll go to google.ca as an example. I'll copy the URL uh, in my address bar. And then, you know, I'll highlight the text, click the link button, and the URL area I'll paste, you know, in this, for this example, it's uh, google.ca. So I'll click OK. I'll preview and then right here if I click here it brings me to google.ca and again that can be a you know it can go to any other website or go to a PDF document on your own website which I'll, I'll get into in a little bit or you know a word document on someone else's website anywhere you can just you know copy and paste the link so I'll show you a couple more options with link so right here um, the drop down here if you have any of these modules enabled you can select them say you know uh, the forms you want to link you know, to the forms of your website, then you can click that and it'll automatically fill in the correct URL. Or if you have a page, say, you know, the Contact Us page, you click it, automatically fills in the correct URL again, or fills in the appropriate URL. Um, the Browse Server button is if you're linking to a file that you already added to the files area of your website. So if you're adding, you know, a Word document to your website, a PDF, a picture, um, you'd add them to the files area first, and then you go to the page that you want to link uh, to them to, or from, and so for here, if I want, you know, I can just click on the PDF if I want to link directly to it. Uh, for this example, you know, I'll click on the Creek JPEG, click OK, just reload my page here, and you'll see if I click here, it brings me to a picture of the, the Creek in this case. But if it was a PDF document or Word document, you know, um, it would open up or prompt me to save it on my computer, uh, stuff like that. So if I edit the link again, which, by the way, I'm just right-clicking here, clicking Edit Link. Um, there's a couple different types here. Link to Anchor and Text and also Email. Anchor I'll get to in just uh, a minute since it's the next button right here. But if I click Email, um, right here is where you can supply an email address. Subject line and body are, um, you know, they're not they're not needed, but you can put them in there. They're optional kind of thing. Um, but yeah, you'd obviously want to put an email address. And then, so essentially if I put in, you know, support at tomahawk.ca's email address. And someone clicks that, whatever they have as their default program email client on their program, or on their computer, um, say it's Microsoft Outlook or you know um, Zilla, uh, Thunderbird or um, you know Gmail, any of the examples, they they would click the link on the website and it would automatically open up an email ready to go to. In this example, you know supportatomahawk.ca. And again, uh, message subject and body are optional, but if you fill them in uh, in the message that's already ready to go to supportatomahawk.ca, there will also be a subject filled in with whatever you put here and also a message body. So uh, yeah, link to Anchor I'll get into in just a minute. In URL too, there is a, a target tab right here. And this is essentially uh, almost the effect of the link. So a very popular one if you're linking to someone else's website. You don't have to, but um, a lot of people will make it open in a new window or a new tab. So that's where you can select that. So when someone clicks on the link to, you know, say go to, go to Google, it keeps them on your website, but also opens it uh, Google up in a new window or a new tab. So when they close that, they're still you know on your website. And there's pop-up windows, you know, different effects that you can choose from there. Um, so I'll show you what an anchor does. I'll click up here and click the anchor button. An anchor is, or yeah, anchor is essentially a link within a page. So a very popular one, or one that you've probably seen, is back to top, right? So I'll put back to top here. Anchor name is mostly for my reference. There we go. So people, when they go to this page, they won't actually see the anchor picture here. It's just the editor's telling me that, you know, th that's where the anchor is, right? And so I'll move my link for this example near the bottom of the page. I'll edit it because I still haven't specified that I want it to go to that anchor, right? So here's that, you know, third type, link to anchor and text. If you have multiple anchors on one page, that's fine. Uh, it'll just, you know, show up as more of them. So I'll click the back, back to top one. So essentially what I just did here is I told it when someone clicks this link, go to this anchor, right? So I'm going to preview show you what that does. So I'll click here and you'll see it brings me to the anchor which is currently right there on your website. 
So again, that, that's good for back to top, or a lot of the time people have uh, frequently asked questions pages, or on their frequently asked questions page, there'll be a bunch of questions at the top, and uh, when someone's going to their website, they can you know go through the questions, oh, I'm not interested, not, not interested, oh, that's the one I'm looking for, click it. And then it'll bring them, you know, halfway down the page or to the bottom where the answer is, you know, it could be a paragraph if they want or a whole page. But at least they can sort through the questions quickly and click on the one that they're interested in to get the answer. Um, next button is the picture button. So I'll just create some room here. And it's right here, image or picture. And this is essentially to get a, a picture or an image into the content area of uh, your page that you're editing. So I'll click Browse Server. Opens up my files area. Um, here you'll see this is uh, stands for small, medium, large, and original, and that's uh, pixel sizes. So you know on, on the internet, pictures are they have a certain width and height in pixels, um, and you know the original is the width and height that you when you uploaded the file, you know what it was. But maybe if you uploaded the wallpaper sized picture, then all you, know, all you want is like an icon or a, a smaller one, then you can you know select medium or small or large, you know depending on what you're looking for. So for this case, I'll click medium. Right, and here I, I can still go in and specify customly you know, specify the width and height if I want to. So I'll click OK, and you'll see here that it's added the image to my content area. Right, um, a question I'm asked a lot is how do I get the image to, or how do I get the text to wrap around the image? Because currently, the image will not, you know, the text is not going around the image. So I can do that is I'll right click on the image, go to Image Properties, and right here there's Alignment, and I'll, I'll align it to left or to the right click OK and you'll see here the text is automatically, you know, if I add some spaces to it, it's automatically going around the image. Um, and also I'll right click here, go to image properties. You can add a border if you want, for example. And H space and V space. Um, essentially if the text is right up against the image and it doesn't look good to you and you want to add a little bit of space between the image and the text, you can add some uh, you know horizontal and vertical spacing. Click OK and then it'll add spacing where needed automatically. If you want to be a, if you want a picture to be a link, then you just click on the picture and click the link button, and then you go from there. So here I'll create some room uh, for my next example. Okay, so here we have the flash button. That's if you have any flash in the files or of your website, you can browse there and um, and add one. We'll also be adding a video in the future uh, showing you how to embed YouTube videos into your website. That's actually a different thing where you can add it through the source area. Um, next button we have here is table, so I'll click it. Now, tables, they're not, they're not complicated at the beginning, but they can get complicated as there's a lot of things to think of when you're creating a table. Right, a lot of the time you create it for organization, kind of keeping everything in its own square. Um, but, you know, you have to deal with rows, columns, what the width of the table is, what the width of the individual cells are when you're merging them. Right, so that's where it can somewhat get complicated, or at least tedious, and that there's a lot of things to think of, or, or have to, you know, sometimes tweak to get it correctly um, working. But here I'll, I'll create an example one. So one row, um, we'll put, you know, two columns. The width you can put it in pixels, or in a, you can also select percentage. So right now I'm telling it to be 100 percent of the the width of the page. Click OK. This is also something I get asked a lot. If you see, I start typing in here. It's actually moving the middle column, right? It's almost like a tug of war back and forth. That's because although I told the table to be 100% of the width of the page, I haven't actually um, told it how, what the width of, you know, this cell should be, this little square here, this rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight, you know, uh, the two cells. I'll right click, just like everything else is where you get your extra options, right? So with um, tables, you can add additional columns, rows, merge cells, stuff like that. But in this case, I want that you know, I want to specify the width of that cell. So I'll go to Cell Properties. Here's the width. Click 50%. Click OK. And now you'll see here, it's not, no matter what I put in here, it's not going to push that middle divider. Um, and yeah, there's you know, additional table properties that you can add in here. Spacing, for an example, you can make the border zero, so it's, it's an invisible table somewhat. But there you'll see here, I've added spacing as well. Um, so the next three buttons, uh, line, you know, very simple. Also, emoticons, you know, if you want any smileys, you click them and adds them to the website. Uh, insert special characters. Some of these you can get to on your keyboard. Other ones, you know, they're useful, but maybe you don't have them on your, your computer or your keyboard, right? So you just click them and it brings them into their page. Um, 
The next couple buttons right here, styles, normal, font, size, and also color, they all have to do with the formatting of the text. So some of what we were getting into at the beginning where it's, um, you know, what kind of text? Times New Roman. What's the size? 30. Uh, what's the color of the text? Red. Uh, you know, a bunch of information like that. So, you know, essentially it shows me previews of what it'll look like. And then you can click it and it'll, it'll change that text. Um, in HTML you have heading 1, 2, and 3. That's for mostly titles and subtitles. But here we have normal. What kind of font? Again, you know, Times New Roman Arial, Courier New, anything like that. What the size is. And also the color of the text. So, you know, red. And there we go. My text is red. Um, so yeah, that's all to do with the formatting of the text. Um, here is sh show blocks. Is basically if anyone, if you know HTML, it's kind of like in the source area. Then it kind of shows you what's going on in the background, um, but it won't actually do anything to the content of your website. So that's what that's for. Kind of shows you, you know, paragraph tags, divs, anything like that. If you're familiar with HTML. And then uh, next one here, the last one is about the Seek editor, and that's just the company that makes the uh, the editor. Shows you what version and link to their website. Alright, that concludes the uh, Seek Editor video. Don't forget to save your changes. Bye.